On April 8th, we have a solar eclipse in the fiery sign of Aries. Now, Aries brings about this energy of a newborn, somebody beginning. It's fresh starts, it's clean slates, it's about initiating things. It's it's exploring the world for the very first time. It's associated with the keywords of I am. Therefore, this solar eclipse is going to be focused on everything that has to do with yourself, the sense of self. This means any issues that are concerning um, independence, your courage, individuality, all of these are going to be brought to the front burner for you to now take notice of. It's going to be a time for you to get your footing within the universe because it's pushing and prodding you out of your comfort zone. This is going to be a time that you're going to uh, experience bold originality and action. It's going to be brought to the forefront. This is going to be a time to open up doors to a new storyline in your life, all while bringing these faded endings. Expect pivotal realizations and these impulsive Aries-like feelings to take center stage. Your personal goals and how you show up in the world, everything is going to be under close scrutiny. This is going to be a time for you to look in the mirror and ask yourself, are you living for yourself or are you living for others? Are you working on your self-confidence or on your inner wisdom? Are you exuberating fierce independence to implement implement the needs that um, can help you change your personal future? Because solar eclipses are very karmic, they can illuminate and challenge any problems that you have surrounding topics of your independence and your personal courage. This is going to be an opportunity for you to take steps towards self-empowerment by tackling problems that literally undermine you. You are now going to be in a, in a position to understand that the changes, their endings, and they're necessary for your, your own personal growth and that you can handle the these things. You've got this. You need to do this in order to move forward with your best and highest good. New moons, they bring about these clean slates, new beginnings, fresh starts. So trying something new, uh, being innovative, going after it, initiating it, wanting it with power and confidence. This will be a time to um, embrace your assertive uh, energies and to take charge of your life. That's what Aries is. Eclipses are like new moons on steroids. And so take time to reevaluate re all relationships within yourself. Make these important changes in your life. Look for adventure. Look for finding this inner happiness. Being self-sufficient. Being independent. Now this new moon, it aligns with um, Mercury that is currently retrograde. And it's going to be a little hard for you to see your path. But it's bringing about this discomfort with the past that's very real now, motivating you to move forward towards these new beginnings. As well, Mars is the ruler of Aries. Now Mars is moving and coming in alignment with Saturn. I love this because Saturn requires um, regulations and rules. It's the father of time. It's healthy boundaries. It's, it will help take the Aries energy and say, this is the goal. This is where you need to move forward with. It's coming in alignment, suggesting that um, you, can, you can overcome these obstacles with uh, your fierce determination. Now, with this eclipse, you might experience this strong urge to act on um, impulse. That's the Aries energy. However, it's going to be really important that you avoid jumping to any conclusions and asserting yourself without also considering the feelings and um, the reactions of others. There's a big difference between asserting yourself um, for from a place of like healthy confidence and asserting yourself brashly and blindly, which can give you this false sense of confidence and bravery. Now, looking forward, flaws or, flaws or discrepancies, this is going to be an important system in your life that it's going to be able to reveal in the wake of the, the eclipse, prompting you to redo or to start something fresh. Something will end in order for something else new to start. Um, you might be called to give up something in order to move forward into this new chapter of your life. Now, new may be unrecognizable at this time. It's going to be important for you to allow the necessary surrender into the unknown so you can step into your future.
Hi, I'm your astrologer Patricia Tate and this is your April 8th Aries Eclipse monthly forecast. So to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. Now let's dive in. So for Aries Sun and Aries Rising, this eclipse is occurring in your first house of self. We know that this has everything to do with you, your identity, your strength, your habits, what you're presenting to the world. I call the first house like you being seen like with a business card or a website. It's your outlook on life. This has everything to do with your power, your self-expression, you personally stepping into your divinity. Now, the sun rules over your fifth house of you taking risks, joy, pleasure, tapping into your inner child, being creative. And what does creativity mean for you? Art, music, poetry, gambling. It's the house of risks. It's children or childlike behavior or adult children or affairs. It has to do with, um, I want to do something. I need to focus on me and I need to bring joy and pleasure to me. The moon represents your foundation, your home, your family, your roots. You wanting to take risks, but building this solid foundation in which you can uh, build sustainability of who you're becoming, who you're stepping into. Now, this means that there there could be issues that are concerning your independence about you wanting to take these risks courage of i need to bring joy and pleasure to my life i'm going to um i'm, I'm going to try my hand at poetry or try my hand at art or the the fifth house also is about investments it's about recreation and joy of this is what I want to do in my free time. And so, and not being judged upon it. Um, individuality and saying, no, this is who I am. I'm going to explore these avenues of my life. Um, it's going to be a time that you're going to want to get your footing because the universe is saying, look, you are stepping into who you are meant to be, who you are becoming. The North Node is the direction in which we're supposed to be going. And so for the last year, the universe is saying, step into your vitality, step into your strength. This is your general temperament. It's your body. It's who you want to be known as. And so this could be known as, um, a Reiki healer, or this could be known as a business person. This could be known as a mother or like what gender. It, the first house is your personal identity. So there could be these pivotal realizations and these impulsive feelings. You are going to be taking um, center stage for everybody to see you. This also revolves around your personal goals and how you show up in the world. Everything is going to be under close scrutiny and you wanting your foundation to be stable. You working on your self-confidence, fierce independence, um, you needing to make these necessary changes. They're, they're necessary for your personal growth. Um, now, new moons, they begin, they're like new beginnings, fresh slates. They illuminate um, their, these challenges or these problems that you have surrounding your personal independence. Where do you give up your energy, your power, your wants, your needs, your desires for other people? The south node is in your seventh house of partnership, you with other people. This can be with family, this can be with um, business partners, significant others, clients, your one-on-one -on -one relationships. It's also open enemies and exes. And so you are going to be working on self-empowerment and tackling these problems that undermine you and uh, under undermine your position of who you are bringing these huge endings and you saying I need to do this for my personal growth now we have um, the ruler of Mars and it's coming close or moving upon Saturn Saturn being the planet with the rings and having the boundaries and Mars being what you want to initiate 12th house self-sabotage, fears, hidden enemies, paying attention to dreams, intuition, psychic ability um, of you, what you want to do. And so basically Saturn says, this is what you have to do. Let me narrow some things for you. Bring this into alignment and this is how you're going to go after it. I love this because Saturn is saying, this is how you're going to align yourself. Move after this, conquer your fears 
move past um, your your self sabotage and um, realize what skill set that you have and tap into your intuition this could be ga uh, guides angels ancestors any information that you receive from the spiritual realm or you can call it your gut instinct and your intuition I do want to bring in one more thing and this is mercury mercury is currently retrograde and so it's making things a little bit challenging it's showing you illuminating these areas where okay I'm, I'm struggling with this and I have to I have to move into this and it's going to be new but I'm reevaluating my relationships with myself my relationships with other people mercury going back over is going to move past Chiron your wound the wound that has to be with things that other people have said and done that have affected who you are individually and so you're gonna be making these important changes I, I really encourage you to move past this discomfort move into the alignment and use Saturn's energy of directing where you want your power to go and um, determination you can overcome any of the obstacles that come your way I absolutely love this for you Aries because this is an opportunity for you to step into who you are build this solid foundation and make sure that the things that you want to do the things that bring you joy and pleasure are more at the forefront so Aries I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations for private consultation you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com and to get updates as soon as they're released please subscribe so for Taurus Sun and Taurus Rising, this eclipse is occurring in your 12th house. Now the 12th house represents, uh, it's the hidden house. It's where we go to sit, to be alone, to receive messages or to tap into um, uh, other spiritual realms or the dream realm, our ancestors to receive messages from spirit guides. It's the house of affliction or hospitalization this could be an ending or a moving towards better health and healing the 12th house represents where we go to take those deep journeys within our heart and our soul where we go to transcend to other places that um, that we we just cannot get to here it's about this inner healing and it's a connection to divine or source or God Yahweh Allah Buddha whatever you call your higher power and so this new moon here is is you saying I have to have the courage to, to to dive in and say is this karma have I brought this in from a past life can I release myself from this am I ready to be healed from this um, moving these things to the front burner and prodding yourself out of your comfort zone Aries is the warrior and so there could be these um, pivotal realizations of this is where I'm going and this is what I have to do I have to be the warrior I have to be the one to make this happen the Sun rules over your your fourth house of your foundation your ancestors that have come there before you people that feel like family or actually people that are family the fourth house is what we build our life upon now the your third house is represented by cancer the moon and this is the way that you communicate with cousins and siblings and neighbors it's also who you communicate with on a daily basis and wanting these nurturing compassionate feelings of of how you talk and how you share ideas wanting a stable foundation but wanting also to break the karma of these these past um, afflictions that have either been passed down from generational trauma or brought in from past life experiences the 12th uh, the 12th house is where we can do the shamanic work or we where we can tap into our past lives our dreams our intuitions our um, the Akashic records now with this, this is karmic and it's illuminating some problems that you may have surrounding yourself with what does hold you back is this yourself your your uh, like the 12th house is your your hidden enemies but it's also self-sabotage and you getting over I am no longer going to allow this to hold me back I'm going to be stepping into this I'm gonna work on my self-confidence 
I'm going to work on my inner wisdom, following my gut instinct, looking towards this fierce independence and implementing the need for changes. So for my personal future, I have to understand that there needs to be some endings to some things. It's about breaking the chain and moving forward for your personal growth. Now, new moons, clean slates, they're fresh beginnings. Um, and this is about being innovative and um, a new moon on steroids because it's the eclipse. And so it's a quick, um, uh, it's fast, it's hard, it's fast. And it's about being assertive, taking charge of your life, stepping into it. I want to bring in that Mercury. Mercury is currently retrograde. Mercury, thoughts, ideas, communication, travel. Now, Mercury went across your Chiron. And so your the wound having to do with 12th house, like fears and words, things that have been said to you in private that nobody else knows how much they truly have affected you over your lifetime. This can be with family members, siblings, cousins, neighbors, people that you grew up with. This is uh, an opportunity for you to say, all right, I, I now see where these words have affected my personal growth and I can now reevaluate this and now I can step into this and make the important changes that I can heal from from these things. I want to bring in um, Mars. Mars is coming closer, moving closer to Saturn. Saturn is the planet with the rings around it, like having these healthy boundaries. It's in the sign of Pisces, in your 11th house of your hopes, your wishes, your dreams, your goals, where you want to go, what you want to do, who you need to align with. Saturn works really well with Mars. Mars wants to initiate and it just needs the guidance. And so this is an opportunity for you to say, I need to be healing myself. I need to be paying attention to my dreams, my what the ancestors are telling me. I need to be able to do those deep journeys and release myself for this inner healing of things that uh, have, have happened in the past that are still haunting me today. And then Saturn is going to take Mars's energy and say, this is the goal. And this is what I want to go after. This is what I need to do. I need to create the healthy foundation in which I want to build my personal life upon. This is determination and overcoming the obstacles in order to build the healthy foundation in order for you to move forward with. So Taurus, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Gemini Sun and Gemini Rising, this eclipse is occurring in your 11th house. Now the 11th house represents you with other people that you either want to spend time with, like through volunteering, or that, in, that are in alignment with where you want to go or what you want to do in this life. It's hopes and dreams and goals. It's also people that you align yourself with, like workmates and uh, peers or kindred spirits or like your star family. The sun rules over your third house of communication. It rules over your siblings, your neighbors, your cousins. It's who you communicate with on a daily basis. And this could be in the grocery line. It's also um, technology and communication like email, phone, text, or like Reddit, YouTube, and it's short distance travel. Now the moon, the moon rules over what you need in order to feel safe and secure currently and so this is your money your cash your property your resources it's your salary your income it's your um, movable property but it's your it's your resources your self-esteem the second house represents everything that has to do with your uh, finances but I look at it as what do I need in order to feel secure? Is it people that I surround myself with, um, the place in which I live in, and the resources that I have in order to feel secure? So know that this eclipse uh, is illuminating any of these, these challenges that you have um, at, the, at the time that are you focused on your goals? Needing to have this courage, this individuality of, I have to be focused on what I wanna do. I have to get my footing and push myself outside of my comfort zone. 
I need to look in the mirror and ask myself, am I living my best life? Am I living it for myself? I need to work on my inner confidence, my my inner wisdom. I need to have this fierce independence to implement these needed changes in the way that I communicate um, and who I surround myself with. What do I need in order to feel secure? What goals should I be going after? This is very karmic. It's illuminating the areas of where you need to have the personal courage and the independence in order to move forward. Um, making these changes and uh, pushing yourself um, like outside of of like literally your comfort zone uh, re-examining or re-evaluating your relationship with yourself and within these groups that you belong to possibly where you volunteer uh, with where you work or with um, like for me it would be like astrology groups or book clubs and so what organizations do you belong to that you're now going to be reevaluating? i'm bringing that up because now we have mercury mercury is retrograde and so mercury has you going back over chiron your wound with things that were said to you when you were younger, either through work associates or growing up with school, with parents, with family, with friends that made you not feel worthy about what you wanted to do in life, your goals. How did it stymie you or how did it stall or, or, or hold you back? And so those words, you now have this opportunity to go back over them and move forward with like a healing of sorts um, this is going to be more leaning towards self-empowerment tackling these problems that have undermined you and now moving in a position to understand that you are in charge of your destiny and that these things that have happened in the past that have been said um, heal from them take this opportunity to like do the inner healing moving past them um, stepping into uh, confidence and power and passion and having um, being assertive taking charge of your life I want to bring in one more thing that Mars is moving closer to Saturn Mars is the ruler of uh, like Aries and Mars so Saturn Saturn is the planet with the rings it has the 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 fence around the yard the boundaries the healthy boundaries this is at the top of your career your job your legacy Mars moving in conjunction with Saturn is saying Saturn is saying these are your goals this is what you can accomplish this is what um, like is available to you in this lifetime the tenth house is your reputation your ambitions and your professional life and so it says let me help you align with your best and highest good let me show you where the goal is and mercury is saying i have to heal from some of these wounds and some of these things might be a little bit foggy and i need to i need to trust myself i need to be in alignment and i have to tap into the the determination to overcome these obstacles to move into my best and highest good um, eclipses their their karmic and this is you stepping into your divinity with where do you want to go in life what do you want to do what what's what's for your best and highest good so gemini i would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Cancer Sun and Cancer Rising, eclipses are always very important to you because this is like your ruling planet. So we have this happening at the top of your chart you focused on your career your job your legacy you focused at the top of your chart on w your reputation where do you want to go what do you want to do how do you want to be seen how do you want to like how do you want to be known the the 10th house is like you at the top you being seen by other people who are from afar it's different than the first house is that's who you're presenting to everybody the 10th house represents your ambitions your reputation your legacy it is this is what i'm building and this is what i want people to see and know about me now cancer rules over who you are 
your first house of your identity, your strength, your habits, your intuition, your psychic ability, your your home, um, your I always say that the first house is like your business card or your website because it's who you want to show or present to the world. It's it's your personality, it's your appearance, it's your happiness. Now the sun rules over your second house of your self-worth. What do I need? in order to feel secure. That could be money, resources, anything that um, salary or income, talents, your opinions. The second house is your self-worth. And so all of this is coming into a, an alignment with moving towards your karmic destiny of you stepping into your divinity. It is your time. This is about you being very independent, using strong courage to um, be the individual, to not always take care of other people's needs before yourself, um, to put your needs before everybody else's, put your needs on the front burner, move out of your comfort zone, for you to be taking center stage at this time, making sure that your goals are met. Um, when you look in the mirror, are, are you looking at yourself and are you saying, am I living my, my best life? Am I living my life um, for me or for others to make others happy? Because cancer wants to nurture. Cancer wants to create this beautiful home and and to like feed great food and and make comfort and like have all these beautiful things for people. And so are you working on your self-confidence, your inner wisdom? You have so much to share. Your intuition is spot on. And so this is going to be this opportunity of you saying, no, I'm going to, I'm going to implement the needed changes that I have to take in order for me to move into my future of what does that look like? Eclipses being karmic, they illuminate uh, these areas that could be challenging or surrounding these problems. I want to remind you that Mercury is retrograde and Mercury has, um, Mercury is going uh, through your, your public sector where everybody is seeing you, your reputation, and it has crossed over your wound, Chiron, with where you have been wounded with words. This is from family, from authority figures, from significant others, from childhood friends. This could be from, it's, it's wounds that you have received uh, through words and interactions of undermining, not valuing, not appreciating the goals that you have set for yourself of who you are, who you are. Like, no, you'll never be able to do that. No, you, you know, you can't do that as a professional. No, like it's literally you, them squashing you and you feeling it and saying, no, I'm ready to move past this. I've overcome this dark shadow in my in my life. I'm ready to heal from this. Um, I'm ready to look at myself with close scrutiny and say, I need to be living my life for myself, working on my inner confidence, working on my inner wisdom, having this fierce independence of where do I want to move forward with. And um, healing those wounds, um, stepping towards empowerment and like tackling all these problems that um, they, they, they bother me, but nobody knows about them. Remember that this is what's inside you. All of this needs to happen because it's necessary for your, your internal growth to be seen um, by others as an authority figure, to be seen as somebody that they can look up to. Now, um, being, in, uh, being assertive, taking charge of your life, looking for adventure, um, finding your inner happiness. I wanna bring in also, uh, Mars is coming into a conjunction with Saturn. Mars is the ruler of, of this, this Aries eclipse. And so we say Saturn has the rings around it, that has the boundaries, the fence around the yard. It's in your uh, ninth house of uh, foreign people, places, and things, these cross-cultural experiences, these where I want to have work published or where I want to take classes or um, legal matters. And so Saturn says, look, in order to do what you're doing, you need to have this strong foundation and you need to have a goal. And Aries is like, yep, I can, I can do this. I'm going to do all of this healing. I'm going to go after it. And Saturn says, 
let's focus on this and let's have mini steps in order to get there and they work really well together this is uh, mercury retrograde the path can be a little bit blurry but uh, mars is the ruler coming into alignment with saturn is saying Look, with determination, hard work, you can overcome all of these obstacles. The work will be done within. People will not see it, but they will be the beneficiary of it because who you will be known for. The the 10th house is you being seen, like honors, awards, public reputation, your professional life, your ambitions, your goals, because you have gifts and talents that need to be seen and shared with other people. All right, so Cancer, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Leo Sun and Leo Rising, uh, the Sun and Moon are having this eclipse in your ninth house. The ninth house represents you in connection to the outside world with who you are connected to with taking a class or taking a workshop um, diving into a different religion or a spirituality wanting to travel somewhere wanting to have your work published teaching a class um, wanting to travel somewhere it's cross-cultural experiences that you want to have with other people you want to experience this now it's really important because the Sun rules your first house of self this is you saying uh, for my, uh, I want to engage in this for my strengths and my habits and um, my power, my self-expression. I will feel good. I will feel better about myself, my appearance, my personality. I need to do this for me. And the moon rolls over your 12th house of self-sabotage. And it's also uh, the house where we go. It's the house of affliction, but it, I look at it as also the house of dreams and intuition and psychic ability, the uh, Akashic records, the, the house of shamanic work, um, uh, astral travel, astral pro projection, uh, meditation, and yoga. The 12th house is the house where we go within to understand the messages that are that do not come from other people they come from our ancestors or our spirit guides or our angels or come from within ourself it is about inner healing and transcendence it's how can i tap into self to heal myself so i can be a better person and in in this lifetime and so the sun and the moon connecting up together. This is like a new moon on steroids, new beginnings, fresh starts, clean slates, you stepping into your divinity of, of independence and courage, being the individual of, I want to take this class. I, I want to understand this. I want to teach this. I'm, I, I'm ready to go, go and explore here. The ninth house has everything to do with these prophetic dreams and visions and, and wanting to understand what does all of this mean? Understanding the universe and what is out there and bringing it into yourself and what you know to be true within. Now, stepping into your individuality, you, um, using courage. Aries is the, the, it's the fire sign that wants to initiate. So there's going to be these pivotal realizations, these impulse feelings of, I have to go there. I have to take this class. I have to understand this. I'm ready to do this. I'm ready to teach. I want to publish this work, something that has to do with legal matters. I'm, I'm ready to finish this course. Um, it has everything to do with education and travel and doing these things. Now, this is going to be an opportunity to step towards a position of understanding yourself better in who you are in the world and um, self-empowerment and tackling your problems that up to this point have kind of undermined you that have stifled your growth now I want to bring your attention to mercury mercury is also in this house this could have you going back over a class um, going back to a book going back over to something that you were learning going back to a place that you were uh, that you feel called to do it will have you going back over Chiron your wound the the mercury chiron conjunction uh is about 
um, where I have been wounded by words from others when I was younger. This could be with a teacher to you as a student or friends or family um, or, or just your connection with people that they have said things to you that have hurt or damaged you and you're, it, it, this is like going to pull back the bandage and say enough time has gone by. Um, words can harm so let's work on healing these let's focus on um, an opportunity for you moving into self-empowerment tackling these problems moving into a position that you're ready to end this chapter of your life and moving on with the necessary growth that you now um, are ready to explore um, new innovative you ready to move on with passion and confidence um, reevaluating some of your relationships that you have with others and yourself and is there this healthy balance and this could include the family members or the friends um, or with with uh, workmates or classmates you coming into alignment with who you're supposed to be um, looking for adventure and finding this like inner happiness within I want to bring up also uh, Mars is, is moving towards um, Saturn now Mars is the ruler of Aries and so it's coming into alignment with Saturn. Saturn is the planet that has the rings around it so think about it as a fence around the yard, the boundaries and Saturn says these are the goals, this is what you have to do. This is in your eighth house of your shared resources or the house of deep bonding. It's the house of birth, death, rebirth so we know that there's a major transformation going on within you with you connected with others and Saturn says this is the goal these are the steps that you need to take there and it helps give Aries the path in order to get to the goal and with Mercury being a little foggy or unclear it's saying look with determination you can overcome all of these obstacles that are holding you back and and Leo you're going to be able to step into your divinity step into your power and regain who you are your first house and your 12th house of what has been holding you back either from past lives or generational trauma passed down from one to another so Leo I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Virgo Sun and Virgo Rising, the eclipse is occurring in your eighth house. Now the eighth house is the house of deep bonding. It's the house of transformation, birth, death, rebirth. It's where you are connected with other people. And so this could be family members where you've had this connection with other people through contracts or negotiations. It could be um, debt or wills or home or property. It could be exes with alimony or child support or with children. This could be with business partners or significant others. Um, anything that you have these these contracts with the eighth house is joint ventures or shared resources and it is the house where we want to have this deep connection but we need to go through a, a transformation of in order for things to feel safe and secure now the sun rules over your 12th house this is your dreams your intuition the house of isolation the house that we tap into our spirit guides our ancestors our uh, overcoming our fears overcoming the 12th house represents um, self-sabotage it's also hidden enemies and so this is going to be an opportunity for you to use your intuition use your abilities use your um, use what you have from non-earthly realms of angels and guides ancestors dreams um, the Akashic records uh, through yoga, through meditation, through um, any type of meditation or any type of, of the hidden realm in order to take that deep journey and say, where is this coming from? And I need to heal from this. I need to work on the inner healing and I want to be connected to the divine. I don't want to feel this anymore. I want to be liberated. I want to be free from this. Now, the moon rules.
rules over your dreams of this is where I want to go. My hopes, my wishes, my dreams, my goals. Not like I'm dreaming of like something. It's this is what I want to do in this lifetime. I, I want to like, what do you want to do for a career or a job or leave your mark on society? The 11th house is like who you volunteer with in order to feel good about yourself or to give of service to others. It's also who you connect up with in order for you with your professional life. And so bringing this all together is going to bring about this pivotal realization these impulse um impulse feelings of no i need to tackle this i need to i need to move out of my comfort zone i need to exert my independence with courage and being the individual of where am i in this partnership area of my life and with you virgo this is all partnerships that you have these deep um, connections with this is karmic and it's illuminating these challenges that you have that are surrounding your your independence your personal courage and this is going to be an opportunity for you to take these steps towards self empowerment of your personal money your resources your cash your property your bills um, anything that's been holding you back I would reevaluate all contracts. I say this because Mercury is stationed retrograde at the time. Mercury is um, writing um, and contracts and travel. And so Mercury has gone past your Chiron. It came into conjunction with it. Chiron is your wound. And so Mercury went over it and said, this is where I was wounded with people who didn't have faith in me, people who cut me down, people who didn't believe in me. These are the words that people said to me while I was growing up that I internalized and I'm now ready to move past and heal. Remember that the eighth house is birth, death, and rebirth. I'm ready to transform this. I first have to identify it. This person said this, they may not have realized how critical it hurt or how bad it hurt or, and, and it doesn't matter because now is your opportunity to say, I identify where it came from. I'm now ready to move forward from it. And so Mercury is making things a little bit blurry. Um, this is going to be a uh, new, innovative, you with passion and confidence moving towards you having to be assertive taking charge of your life and this is with your resources and the resources that you share with other people all resources like all money all cash all property all bonds that you have with other people like these these deep bonds i want to bring in um, mars is Mars is the ruler of Aries and it's now coming into this alignment with Saturn in your seventh house of partnership. Saturn is the planet that has these rings around it. So think about having this fence around the yard and saying we have to have some healthy boundaries here in the sign of Pisces. My hopes, my wishes, my dreams, my my goals of, of with partnership, with clients, with one-on-one -on -one relationships, with open enemies, with exes. Like can't we all be one with the universe? The seventh house is love, but it's also contracts and negotiations. And so this together is suggesting that with determination, you can overcome these obstacles with these connections that you have with other people in your life moving forward for uh, like your best and highest good. So Virgo, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For a private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com and to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Libra Sun and Libra Rising, this eclipse is occurring in your seventh house. This house has been illuminated for you for the last year. This is the the house of love and contracts and negotiations. I call it the plus one house. It is you with a business partner, you with a significant other, a best friend, clients, all one-on-one -on -one relationships that you have with other people. It's also the house of negotiations and contracts, and these can be written or nonverbal agreements. Now the 
sun rules over your 11th house of your hopes, your dreams, your goals, who you align yourself with, with where you want to go. It's also where I want to give of society and like where I volunteer. So I would, uh, I volunteer for the Appalachian Service Project. And so this would be who I align myself with those groups in order to um, make the biggest impact and align with people who have the same thoughts and ideas that I do. Now, the moon rules over your career, your legacy, authority figures, you being seen in the outside world with um, your professional life, your ambitions, your reputation. The 10th house is the highest. It's the pinnacle. It's you being seen for the skill set that you have. Now, I want to bring in that this is about you stepping into independence, having the courage to be an individual, not being always connected to other people, doing things for yourself, um, pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone. As a Libra rising, uh, this is an opportunity to not always be the people pleaser, to not always be the one connecting everybody. There's these pivotal realizations and these impulsive feelings that are going to take center stage that your goals are what you should be focused on. And you need to take a look in the mirror and say, um, am I living my best life or am I living it for others? Am I living it to make other people happy? Working on your self-confidence, your inner wisdom, you're ruled by Venus. It's about beauty and love and money and knowing that those things are not the most important things in life, that this is independence and needing to change for your future. This is a karmic opportunity for you to um, understand where these problems have occurred. Mercury is currently retrograde and Mercury has gone across Chiron, uh, your wound in your seventh house. Mercury thoughts and words, Chiron wounds in your life where you have had um, these wounds in your life from other people. This could be family members, this could be uh, partners, business partners, significant others, friends. Like this is the most personal part of your life where you have had these wounds of where people have undermined you, not believed in you, said negative things about you, said things about you behind your back and now they're getting and they got back to you. And so this is an opportunity to say, I'm gonna step towards self-empowerment. I'm gonna tackle these problems that undermine me. Um, I'm going to heal and grow from this. Enough time has passed that you can look at it and say, um, where have they done this? What have I, how can I grow and evolve and change from this? I'm working on innovative uh, passion and confidence to move forward and I need to be assertive. I need to take charge of this, take charge of my life. Now, this is going to be made easier to happen because um, Mars is the ruler of Aries and it's coming into an alignment with Saturn. Saturn is the planet of rings. It has, it has the rings around it and it's, it's an earth planet that, set, that has healthy boundaries. Rings is like, they're like the fence around the yard. And in the sign of Pisces is watery and intuitive and saying, we have to have some healthy boundaries here. And so it's setting up goals for you to um, attain these things. Like it says, this is the overall goal. These are the little things that you have to do there. Here, Aries, let me show you the way. And so Mars works really well with Saturn because it gives you, the warrior, a direction in which to move through. And it says, with determination, you can overcome anything and be the best that you can be. Step into your uh, empowerment, your divinity. So Libra, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For a private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Scorpio Sun and Scorpio Rising, this eclipse is occurring in your sixth house of your daily habits. What do you need to do on a daily basis in order to take care of yourself? Putting your health and well-being on the front burner, your mental, your physical, your spiritual, your psychological, 
health and well-being is paramount. The eclipses have been going through the me we sector of where have you been nurturing and caring for other people and not taking care of yourself. The sun rules over your career, your job, your legacy, your reputation, which is very important to you. And so this is a focus on uh, this is I my my reputation is important to me. My my professional life, the things that I want to, to achieve, I don't want these things undermined. It. And so the moon, the moon rules over taking classes or taking workshops. It rules over the ninth house of foreign people, places and things and these cross-cultural experiences. You saying, I might have to go back for training. I might have to take a class in this. This is what I want to achieve for my career. This is how I want to be known. This is my legacy. This is the most important um, thing for me that my my public life of how people can view me the 10th house is you like on the top of and everybody being able to view it you owning your independence you having courage um, to to understand that your individual needs need to come before anybody else um, and that means family members that you're taking care of or work associates. The sixth house is the balance between work and home. And it's also like coworkers and it's family that um, like it's it's where we find a, gu a guide or a mentor. Or it's also the house of, of, of alternative healing and you saying in order to take care, care of these areas of my life, do I see a shamanic practitioner? Do I see a chiropractor? Do I go to a sound bath? Do I go to a past life regression? How can I understand and tap into these things in order to heal me for, for my best and highest good? And what does that look like? Um, your health is going to take center stage here. Your personal goals and how you show up in the world need to take center stage. You need to look in the mirror and say, are you living your best and highest good? Are you living your best life? Are you doing it for yourself or are you trying to do things for other people? And if, if you're trying to do it for others, you cannot show up with your best unless you are taken care of. Work on your self-confidence. This is your inner wisdom. This comes with fierce independence to implement the needed changes that you need for your future. Um, the solar eclipse is very karmic and that it's illuminating these challenges or these problems uh, that surround around um, your independence and your personal courage offering you this opportunity to say, okay, I'm ready to tackle these problems. I'm ready to move forward with this. I now see where I need to take charge of my life. Mercury, Mercury is currently retrograde. Mercury has gone over this area of your life and your Chiron, the, it, the wounded healer, your wound. Mercury, words, Chiron, your wound. People have said things about you, and this could be work associates, bosses, parents, siblings, friends, enemies, and these are how the words have hurt you in the past. And now Mercury going over it is now saying, identify with this. It's going to be hard to see the path in which you need to move forward. And then it's going to go back over it and say, I get it. I see the blessing that can come from this. I have to heal myself and what does that look like that could look like going within for um, taking that deep journey to say okay I, I get this this is inner healing I need to be connected to the divine what is the blessing or the lesson that can come from this because it hurts on such a soul level whenever um, Scorpio whenever you receive a lesson it's like a little knife or a razor blade is always making a little cut on your your heart and your soul and it leaves a scar for you to heal from and that's part of your life lessons and so this is going to be um, an opportunity to for you to embrace things with passion and confidence and for you to take charge of your life and say okay I'm gonna reevaluate my relationships in life and with myself um, I'm going to make the important changes. I'm going to look for my inner happiness. 
Um, Mars is coming, uh, Mars is the ruler of Aries and it's coming into this beautiful alignment with Saturn. Saturn is the planet that has the rings around it, so think about it as the fence around your yard. And Saturn is the goal. The fifth house is children or happiness and joy and what brings you pleasure. And you needing to make a, a goal for that, uh, like that needs to be the ultimate uh, focus of your life of you putting your needs on the front burner and then Mars coming into alignment with this Saturn says here's the goal and Mars is like I see the path let me move into alignment it's kind of like this little soldier that says I got it step one step two step three I got this this is suggesting that with determination you can overcome any obstacles that life throws at you I mean Scorpio you are birth, death, and rebirth, transformation. You are the phoenix rising or the snake shedding its skin at all times in your life. So you've got this. This is stepping into your future. And I'm I'm excited for you, but I'm also holding space because I know that this, um, this change, change is always a little bit difficult for you. So Scorpio, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Sagittarius Sun and Sagittarius Rising, this eclipse is occurring in your fifth house. The fifth house uh, represents children or childlike activities where you where you want to express your creativity through writing or poetry or, or art or music or painting or sewing. It's the house of where we want to take risks, where we want to show who we authentically are. Now, the sun rules over your ninth house of you being connected with other people in the world. It's cross-cultural experience wanting to travel there, taking a class, taking a workshop, having work published, having your work being seen, whatever you are doing. Now the moon, the moon rules over your connection, your deep connection, your deep bonding that you have with other people. This is the house of joint ventures, but it's also these shared resources and the resources can come in uh, with a business partner or a significant other or with family members. This can be uh, through exes or this could be uh, people that you share property or resources with. Now, an eclipse, uh, a solar eclipse in this house, it's very karmic. It is illuminating and challenging any problems that you have surrounding your independence and your personal courage. You needing to take center stage, you going after your personal goals, you saying, I need to do, I need to have more joy and pleasure in my life. And this could be, I want a child. I want to connect to my inner child. I want to be with adults who enjoy the same things as I am because that makes me feel better. Um, this is independence and courage and individuality, moving all these topics to the front burner, pushing you outside of your, your comfort zone. You need this for your inner growth. Where have you put your needs behind everybody else's needs um, for the last year, year and a half of your life? Illuminating this, uh, these problem areas. I want to bring in uh, Mercury. Mercury is currently retrograde. And so Mercury has gone across your Chiron. Mercury is thoughts, ideas, words. I want you to focus on words and uh, Chiron is the wound, the wounded healer. So Mercury has gone through this house of children or your house of creativity or like where you have expressed joy or pleasure in your life. And then it went across your wound. Who didn't value these things in your life? Did your children not value you? Did were are, uh, are, Is there a pain that's associated with you being a child or when you were a child? Words that were said to you about things that you wanted to do, um, poetry, music, art, songs, uh, where you have expressed an idea to take a risk, or the fifth house is also um, love affairs and investments. Uh, when I say taking risks, don't take that, you know, like people just not valuing where you have taken a risk. And we learn from risk taking. We learn from our mistakes. And so you taking a look at your past, and this could be with bosses or family members, um, anybody, uh, teachers, um, who did not value these things and said 
words that hurt you that left a scar upon you and so as mercury went across it it's bringing these things back up and then as mercury goes back over it it's you saying how do i look at the the gift in this how do i look where where i have come from the lesson and then the eclipse is saying i'm ready to tackle these problems aries energy i am ready to to move forward with my own personal growth with confidence to be assertive to take charge to be self-empowered i want to show up for myself i want to be able to look in the mirror and say i lived the best life that i could have and i need to live my life for myself i want to bring in um, mars now mars is the ruler of aries and it's coming into an alignment with saturn Saturn is your home, your family, your roots, your foundation, and it's wanting to have, like Saturn has the rings around it, so think about a strong um, boundary or a fence and a healthy foundation for you to build your life upon or, or build something upon. And so Mars moving into alignment with this is, is an opportunity for you to say, in order for me to move forward, I have to have a strong foundation. And, and Saturn, is the goal and then Saturn says let me break it down for you Aries these are the steps and Mars Mars is going to follow those steps with determination to overcome the obstacle with Saturn's guidance all right so Sagittarius I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations for private consultation you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com and to get updates as soon as they're released please subscribe so for Capricorn Sun and Capricorn rising this eclipse is occurring in your fourth house of home huge major shifts that have to do with your home your family your roots your foundation genealogy understanding things uh, like from your past the fourth house has to do with you and your past but it's also your personal life it's what you like it's the lowest part of your life that that people do not see it's like your traditions like when you shut the doors to your home it's people that have shaped you but it's also people that live in your home or people that feel like family so we know that there's these major changes going on about you needing to assert independence the Sun rules over your eighth house of these shared resources of who you have these joint ventures with this means sharing property this could be parents or siblings this could be um, exes with alimony and child support this could also be significant others with um, uh, business partners or like uh, like uh, marriage partners or life partners uh, now the moon rules over your seventh house of the plus one house you with um, love you with contracts that you have with other people you with negotiating you with written or unwritten or like these verbal agreements the seventh house represents you with clients best friends significant others um, marital or business partners so all of this is leading up to main issues of you asserting your independence you working with courage of of being an individual all of these topics are just now going to be like pushed to the front that you have to deal with this this is going to move you outside of your comfort zone you and your needs taking center stage with your personal goals in front of you um, like you looking in the mirror and saying what do I want my home to look like? How do I feel about this? Am I living for myself or am I living for everybody else? Where have I given up things that I wanted for my home, for others? These, the people that I share these resources with or with clients and what changes do I need in order to implement more independence for myself for my future to to better myself this is a uh, like these pivotal realizations of your personal goals and what do you need to do um, you looking in the mirror saying I need to live for myself I need to have this healthy foundation I need to work on my self-confidence my inner wisdom my my independence and I need to make these changes this is very karmic because eclipses uh, they they move us towards our future and it illuminates uh, uh, any and and they challenge any areas that are surrounding 
areas of your life where we have independence or personal courage issues that we need to step into and change. It's going to be an opportunity for you to step into self-empowerment, to tackle these problems that have been undermining you, and to understand that, yeah, there's going to be major changes. This could be a move. This could be somebody else moving out of the house. This could be a different house, two homes. Um, this could be with a career. Like, it, 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 it's major endings and it's a major uh, beginning and it's going to be necessary for your own personal growth. Now Mercury is currently retrograde so bring that that theme or that flavor in Mercury or uh, think about it as words think about it as as how you talk and what what people have said to you it went across your Chiron your wound and so we bring up things that people have said to you that have hurt or wounded you and have left a scar on you that they don't see, they haven't even thought about, like they've moved on past. And now Mercury's gone across it and it has to do with probably family, your foundation, uh, uh, like teachers or, or, or people that you've worked with that didn't value things that have to do with those people that shaped you. They literally have said things that damaged your psyche and so now mercury going across chiron is like identifying those things and going back over it now that it's in retrograde is how can i look at this and find the 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 blessing or the gift that comes from it i have enough growth i have enough space where i can look back pull back and say I need to move forward with this. I cannot hold on to this any longer. This could be information that you've gained from like ancestry DNA or like secrets that have been uncovered. Um, but this is you taking the opportunity to say, um, I can't exactly see the path, but it's uncomfortable. And I, I need to, I need to heal from this. Now, Mars, Mars is the ruler of Aries, and so it's coming into alignment with Saturn. Saturn is the planet with the rings around it, and so I think about that as the fence around the yard. And so this is your third house of communication, siblings, cousins, neighbors, close to home, and how you, how you show up and converse with people. And so Saturn, Saturn is really good at finding and picking a goal, like picking the mountain that you need to climb. And Mars, once it has the goal, once it sees it, it will go after it. And Saturn wants to break down these goals and say, look, I'm going to suggest to you determination that you can overcome any of these, uh, any of these obstacles. Like you can do it. You just have to be faced in the right direction. And Saturn's going to give you these healthy boundaries, these opportunities for you to be moving forward with what does a healthy home look like for you, Capricorn. So Capricorn, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Aquarius Sun and Aquarius Rising, this eclipse is, is occurring in your third house. Now the third house is all types of travel, communication. This is with siblings and neighbors and people that you work with. This could be you in the grocery line. This could be with a car, with a computer, with technology. Um, the third house represents all types of relationships and how you say and think and do things. This is um, like basic education and coursework. And it could be like putting your thoughts and ideas out there like for a podcast or for a video or for a book. Um, it's it's you. Aries is you and then it's how you are communicating with those people that are near you. Now the sun rules over your seventh house of your partnership. It's the plus one house. You with a business partner, you with a significant a significant other, you with clients, you with a best friend, you with open enemies, you with exes. The seventh house represents um, you and uh, love and relationships and contracts and negotiations and these could be written or unwritten all of these topics the moon represents daily habits of needing self-care needing to take care of your mental physical spiritual health well-being it's also bringing in the topics of your your aunts your uncles and the it's your relationship with co-workers but it's alternative self-care for yourself 
So bringing these topics in, this means that there could be issues of independence, of courage, of individuality, of where do you need to bring these topics to the front burner to push you outside of your comfort zone. These pivotal realizations and these impulsive feelings. Aries is fire. It wants to initiate. It's about taking center stage with your personal goals and how do you show up in the world with the way that you communicate with others, with science, with technology, with travel. The universe is saying, are you looking at yourself in the mirror and are you more concerned with others? Are you living yourself, living your life for yourself or are you living it for others. Work on your self-confidence, how you say things, how you show up, your inner wisdom, the gifts that, that you have to share with others, making this a daily practice, sharing this independence with clients, your best friend, your significant other, your partner, with uh, your exes. Um, illuminating, because this is karmic, illuminating these challenges and these problems that you need to be independent and you need to tap into the personal courage with this opportunity to take the steps towards uh, the self-empowerment of um, being from a position to understand that that changes that the, they need to have these endings and then they will have these beautiful beginnings that's necessary for your growth. Now, Mercury. Mercury is currently retrograde. Mercury has gone past this house with, um, this could be getting new, new, new computer, new phone, new, like the way that you communicate, updating AI, science, technology, all of this. And it's going across your Chiron, your wound. So words, thoughts, ideas, things that have been said to you going across your wound of when you were younger, people um, talking behind your back, people saying things to you either when you were younger as a child, this could be family members, these are hurtful things, this could be partners, this could be um, school, that, like it's in like it hits all areas of communication for you. And so for Aquarius, this is how have you been wounded by other people's words? And so this eclipse is saying, now is the time for me to go back over those wounds, uncover it, and now move forward with, I can step into my divinity, an uh, opportunity for self-empowerment to heal from this, to be assertive, to take these steps to, um, to uncover that there's a gift that comes from it and I can transform from this pain and I can move past this. I can uh, find this inner happiness, this inner healing that can come from this. I want to bring in also um, uh, Mars. Mars is the ruler of Aries and it is in your second house of your self-worth, your cash, your property and resources, but mainly your self-worth. Saturn is here also. And so Saturn is the planet with the rings around it. Think of it as the fence around the yard. Saturn is pick the goal, pick the mountain, we can get there. And so Mars coming up to it, coming into alignment with it says, Mercury th may make things a little bit foggy. And Aries says, I'm going to end these things for you. And Saturn says, here's the goal. Here's the goal, Mars. Here it is, and all you have to do is have determination in order to overcome all of these obstacles in order for you to live your best and highest good. So for Aquarius, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live at 6 p.m. Tuesdays, Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Pisces Sun and Pisces Rising, this eclipse is occurring in your second house. This is really important because this is about your self-worth, your cash, your property, your resources, your skill set, things that you do that you can make funny, that you can make money from, or your your income, your talents, your opinions, your financial condition. It is everything that you need in order to feel safe and secure in this lifetime moving forward. You needing to focus on your money, your like things that you personally value, your self-worth, your finances, your resources, um, your work ethic, 
I love this for you because the sun, the sun rules over daily habits, how you need to make this a daily habit, whatever practices that you are putting into place. The sixth house represents the balance between work and home. And it also represents you with coworkers. It represents self care, not working yourself to the bone, but just saying, I need to make self care a priority. I need to make my health a priority. I need to be thinking outside the box. And how can I make this happen? It is seeking out a mentor or a guide or or it's going to yoga going to uh, making sure I'm making time for meditation the sixth house is alternative he health and healing so that could be a yoga yoga uh, class or uh, a chiropractor or a sound bath or tapping or um, acupuncture all of these topics now the moon the moon rules over your fifth house of children healing the inner child your fifth house of creativity art music poetry where you want to take risks the the fifth house is literally uh, where we want to uh, make investments like investing into yourself it's also sports and activities it's how you express yourself in an area where I, this is this is who I am that other people may not know about and so the North Node is saying you need to be tapping into that you need to be making sure that you're moving into that direction and not ignoring your wants needs and desires your your independence your individuality is going to be brought to the forefront for you to be looking at like think of it as you're looking in the mirror and you're saying is this is this who I am? Am I living my best and highest good? I, am, do I feel good about myself? How's my self confidence? How, like working on my inner wisdom, fierce independence about this is my skill set. This is the money that I need to live off of. This is how I'm going to make my self care a a daily practice. I I want to work on inner growth. I want to understand my spirituality. I want to be with other like-minded individuals who get me. I need to find my tribe. Um, eclipses are very karmic and they illuminate and they challenge any problems that you have that this one's going to be surrounding your independence and you doing things for others to make them feel better instead of focusing on on what are your wants needs and desires so there's going to be some challenges and some major endings and knowing that it's going to be an opportunity for growth and there it could be paying off major debt or saying uh, like I'm I'm going to be ending this part and I'm, I'm going to be bringing bringing upon this new avenue for my personal growth I need to be able to sit with this I need to go after it with passion and confidence I want to bring in that mercury mercury is currently retrograde so mercury are think words and words that have been said to you going across Chiron your wound words that have been said to you about your self-worth this could be teachers when you were growing up this could be parents and siblings and uh, cousins work associates these are people that have said things to you that hurt your self-confidence your self-worth the second house is uh, all about you your values and your opinions and so mercury going across that uh, had people saying things either when you were younger or now as an adult not valuing not appreciating these things with you and so it has gone across it and now it's going to go retrograde over it giving you a second an, uh, an, a second chance to step back and evaluate what is the lesson that I can learn from this what is the gift that came from this how have I how, how do I need to assert my independence for my personal uh, growth what courage do I need to overcome this that these words were yes hurtful but I can now see the the gift that comes from my from leaving that behind and growing and evolving and changing from it uh, doing the change from within using passion and confidence to to step into um, my life taking charge of my life and reevaluating my relationship with myself and what are my values and what are things that I need in order to feel secure and that is people places and things it's not just about your money and so I want to bring also that um, Aries um, Mars is the ruler of 
Aries and so it's coming into a conjunction with Saturn in your first house. Saturn is the planet that has the rings around it and so it's about building a solid um, uh, boundaries or a fence around your yard of people who have access to you, what you share with the world. The first house is your strength, your habits, your vitality, but, but it's who you are sharing, your, like you presenting yourself to the world. It is your power, your appearance, your self-expression and putting some healthy boundaries around it and saying, these are my goals. And as Mars comes closer to it, Mercury suggests a healing of some wounds and some blurriness and Saturn says, these are the goals. Mars, you being the warrior, you can go after this with determination to overcome any of these obstacles to get to where you need to be in order to feel safe and secure for your best and highest good, to step into your divinity, uh, the direction in which you need to be going in order to feel secure. All right, so Pisces, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe.